Hello, I'm Beatrice and I will talk to you about my master thesis. First, I want to tell you about particle physics and why it's so interesting. You probably know that everything is made of atoms. These have a nucleus with electrons orbiting around it. Zooming in, we see that this nucleus consists on protons and neutrons. If we look even closer, the protons and neutrons are themselves made of even smaller particles, called quarks and gluons. We believe that these quarks and gluons, together with the electrons and some other particles, are fundamental, that is, it is not possible to divide them into even smaller particles. The set of all fundamental particles forms the standard model. This theory, proposed in the 70s, includes not only the matter constituents, which we call fermions, but also the particles responsible for their interactions, called gauge bosons. Starting with the fermions, we have six types of quarks. We call them six flavors, up, down, charm, strange, top and bottom. Then we have the electron and its heavier brothers, the muon and the tau. Each of these has its corresponding neutrino. For the bosons, I'm sure you've heard about the photon, the particle of light, responsible for the electromagnetic interaction. But there is also the W and Z bosons, responsible for what we call the weak force, and the gluon, which carries the strong force. To complete this puzzle, the last piece is the Higgs boson. Discovered in 2012, this particle is important because it interacts with some of the others, giving them mass. Speaking of mass, can you guess which of these particles is the heaviest? The top quark. With a mass of 173 GeV, it is more than 40 times heavier than its closest cousin, the bottom quark. Well, in particle physics, mass and energy are closely related, so a large mass means that it costs a lot of energy to produce this quark and study it, and for this reason, there is still a lot we don't know about it. Furthermore, we have strong reasons to believe that the standard model is not the full picture. So this mysterious heavy quark seems like a good place to start looking for something more. But we're forgetting something important. How do we produce these particles? Well, that's a long story. How long? A 27 km long circular tunnel built under the ground in Switzerland and France by the European Center for Nuclear Research, CERN. In this tunnel, called the Large Hadron Collider, or LHC, bunches of protons travel in opposite directions at close to the speed of light. At seven different points along the tunnel, these protons can collide, producing a large number of exciting new particles. One of these points is surrounded by the CMS detector, a cylinder with several layers, each designed to detect a different type of particle. Yes, that's how we make top quarks, typically by disrupting the original protons and producing top and top pairs through the strong force. However, we do not see the top quarks in our detectors. Being so heavy, they almost immediately decay into lighter quarks, normally bottom quarks and some other particles. Okay, so we see bottom quarks in our detectors. Not exactly. In fact, no one ever saw a lonely quark. After being produced, they originate gluons and more quarks, which eventually group together forming hadrons, like the protons and neutrons I told you about. And these we can see. So, in this case, we will see the hadrons coming from the B quarks in the decay products of the W boson. People have measured this process at the LHC already in 2010. So why do I still care? Actually, I'm looking for something slightly different. Very rarely, but sometimes, when two protons collide, they exchange high-energy photons, producing new particles, and keep going, not getting destroyed, only slightly deviated. We call this exclusive production. These events are very interesting, because the outgoing protons provide very precise and useful information. To catch them, a special detector was built. It is called PPS, Precision Proton Spectrometer, and can detect protons that leave the collision intact, about 200 meters from the interaction point. Using data from this detector, combined with CMS, I will try to identify pairs of top quarks that were produced in this exclusive way. If this search is successful, it can tell us a lot about the top quark, namely how exactly it interacts with photons, which can be a very good hint to start unveiling the hidden world that lies beyond the standard model. Thank you for watching.